As the world watches on in helplessness, the unnerving bloodletting and destruction in Gaza in the aftermath of Hamas's carnage in Israel, there is someone who genuinely believes that world can fundamentally alter its ways to achieve peace and harmony using transcendental meditation techniques. That someone is Dr. Tony Nader, an eminent neuroscientist, successor to Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, a transcendental meditation pioneer who is also a medical doctor trained at Harvard University and the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. In the run-up to an upcoming two-week event titled 10,000 for World Peace in Hyderabad, India from December 29th, Dr. Nader is urging the world to at least attempt to change its violent ways. He spoke to Mangsha reports about the event as well as broader themes. Dr. Tony Nader. Uh, welcome to Mayangshah Reports, Dr. Nader. It's always a pleasure to have you on. It's a joy to be with you. Wonderful to be again together. Thank you. Uh, you have an event coming up in Hyderabad, India, between December 20th and January 13th that is supposed to create, and I quote, a wave of peace and harmony worldwide, unquote. Tell me about it. It's based on <clears throat> uh, both a theoretical understanding of the nature of life and uh, a worldview that takes consciousness as primary and therefore acting from the field of consciousness can have an effect that is beyond limited values because it's a field rather than a localized object. It's, it's something that transcends or is beyond the limitations of localization in space and time. So that is one of the foundations. And the main foundation is the experimental findings that we have done in the past 50 years or 60 years, where we have found that when a small group of people practice this transcending together, so they actually go to the field of consciousness, and enliven it in their awareness together, they create an effect of coherence that is beyond the limited confines of the physical presence of the people who are doing it. And what we have found through experimentation is that there is a, an actual proportion, a number, a percentage between the population size that is being influence or being in, uh, uplifted uh, and the number of people who practice these technologies of transcending transcendental meditation and the tm city program as brought to light from the vedic tradition by his holiness Maharishi mahesh yogi so based on both theoretical understanding solid theoretical understanding about the nature of life and experimental empirical findings based on repeated experiments that have shown that there is a decrease in crime, decrease in hospital admission, decrease in conflict through this formula, through this action of, of those meditators who practice the programs together. And so we thought and we feel and we are convinced <laughs> that it will make a big difference. And we would like to be able to demonstrate that and maintain it uh, on a permanent basis. And the formula is simple, is the square root of 1%, which we see often actually in, in uh, physical phenomena of fields where you know the relationship is squared usually. So the square root of 1% or the square root of a percentage creates an effect that is bigger. So the world population is 8.1 billion, 9,000 is the square root of 1% of that. And we are gathering and inviting 10,000 people to participate from end of December till the 12th, 13th of January uh, 24, so 23, 24. On the face of it, uh, Dr. Nader, this sounds fascinating, but uh, the evidence points exactly in the opposite direction as manifest most recently in the Middle East and Ukraine. 
how do you tell the world not to be cynical or even dismissive about an exercise like this? Actually, the evidence uh, completely supports our point of view, which we have been saying repeatedly. First, the evidence proves that the machinery of war has never led to a fulfilling outcome. Although some party might say, I won the war. But then when you look back and you see how much destruction there has been, how much loss of life, how much pain and suffering, how much loss in economical values and having time to rebuild and, and all of that, you realize that nobody can win a war, really. Nobody fully wins a war. And so the evidence re so repeatedly have shown throughout history that people come out, uh, you know, with some temporary feeling that they have succeeded and they have won. But ultimately, everybody would have preferred that things get resolved in ways that don't cause so much suffering and harm. So the evidence of that side is very clear. The evidence on the other side is also very clear because every time we have created an effect, it has produced the results uh, that we are expecting. So the cause has been done systematically in a scientific way with uh, statistics. Whenever we have a square root of 1% of a population practicing this program together, we have seen the expected results. And this has been published in peer-reviewed journal, peer-reviewed journals with actually reduction in actual crime, in actual hospital admission, in uh, conflict, in all kinds of uh, situations, you know, drug deaths, infant mortality. All of this indicates <clears throat> that the concept, the idea that life is based on material physical energy and that it is on this level that we need to resolve the problems all of this had been proven to be wrong in a sense and the the fact that we were able systematically and repeatedly to create the effect through consciousness indicates that the technologies of consciousness number one work Number two, they actually point us to the reality of life not being material. Material and physical are just an expression and expressions of the underlying field of consciousness that is the source, course, and goal of everything. And when this is forgotten, it is like the source of a river that is cut off from the river and then what you end up with is water puddles that get accumulate disease and problems rather than the flood of water the flood of the river's strength that creates newness always energy and all of that so if we disconnect ourselves with our inner source which is consciousness which is a field of unbounded awareness, unbounded consciousness, then we are lost in uh, darkness, we are lost in surface considerations. And on the surface level, it is uh, impossible sometimes, and it looks impossible in these cases that we are experiencing nowadays. It's impossible to resolve the problem. It's like being in darkness, and you have the elements that allow you to resolve. They are there, but you don't see them. So what you do is you fall, you, you, you know, fall on each other and you get angry with each other because you don't see each other. You can't see each other. Your awareness, your vision of who you are, who the other person is, is completely in darkness. That's what we call ignorance and limited perception. So the evidence is on our side. And I want to add one more thing, even though I'm taking time. No, no, to... no. You, you're most welcome. You're most welcome. Uh, what happens is that people think that this is like a pill. You take the pill and then, you know, you have a disease. Let's say you have a headache. You take the pill. The headache goes. Fine. You're, so, you're resolved. You don't need to take the pill anymore. Well, in this case, 
it's important to know that we have to maintain consciousness. The level of consciousness in society has to be maintained on a permanent basis because that is what enlivens the field of uh, intelligence, the field and the reservoir of creativity and perfect intelligence will maintain it alive. You know, if you turn the light on and you say, well, now I see, so I don't need the light anymore. <laughs> Let me turn the light off. Uh, you are, of course, fooling yourself. And in this case, it's the same. You can't say, oh, I slept well in one night. I feel fresh this morning. And therefore, I don't need to sleep anymore. That's not it. You're going to engage in activity. You're going to you know, need to go back to yourself, to go back and stabilize yourself in that value. And so if we see trouble in the world today, it's not because... Uh, we have trying to do something and, and it's not working. It's because people are not doing what they should be doing, what we have been saying they should be doing and what they should be maintaining on a permanent basis. But at this stage, how do you tell the people of Gaza or people of Israel who were initially affected by Hamas violence that uh, they need to look at life from this standpoint when they are in the middle of being oppressed either way they are in the, in the middle of being killed and bombed how do you tell them what you're telling me well first uh first we have to realize that under pressure and under stress there is a automatic human response which is uh the activation of the fight or flight response and that happens on the individual level when we are exposed with danger, but even more so on the collective level, when the sense of identity, who we are, how we want to maintain ourselves, the sense of fellowship, so the group feels, feels threatened. The values of the group, the history of the group, the identity of the group, the culture of the group, the existence of the group feels threatened. And so the, therefore the group, uh, becomes enraged, becomes angry, and therefore uh, there is a response uh, that is understandable uh, on that level of kind of a physiological almost, uh, in individual physiological response, but also collective physiological response, that is a physiological response of the group. So you can't blame a group that is being enraged like that, that being attacked, for reacting in this way. Now, what we can tell them is, you can't tell them stop war and come and meditate. <laughs> of course, they will laugh at you and they will think this is crazy. Mm -hmm. Now, okay, you, know, you can continue to uh, do whatever you want to do, of course, in a humanistic, in a nice way, in a safeguarding way, safeguarding values and, and all of these things, of course, with the rules of engagement being respected and whatever can be done. This is not my area. I don't know the details of this and we don't get into that. So you want to do it. We're not saying not to do it. But what we're saying is that over the long term, it will not bring the solution that is needed. Indeed. And therefore, even while you're doing what you're doing, and I really address now the great people who, who cherish this, nation of Israel and who uh, are researchers, scientists, successful people in the world who have contributed a lot to humanity in research and knowledge and arts and business and who are truly very, very wealthy and successful around the world and very influential also. What I tell them is continue to do what you like. My question is, do you want it to succeed or do you want it to be a long drawn, destructive where, uh, situation where we don't know what the results will be. So you can do what you want to do. I'm not saying don't do it because it will look like, uh, you know, kind of opposing the, the, the right to defend yourself. You know, that's right. not the case, of course. But what we're saying is let's secure success of whatever you are doing. And so what does it take? Uh, President Biden has requested $105 billion 
to be spent for Ukraine and for Israel during this period because of the acute emergency situation. What we are saying is 10,000 people practicing this program, not far from these regions where there is trouble, better, but it could be anywhere in the world, actually. And what we are doing is going to be in India, because India welcomes us, India understands this knowledge, India is having this tradition, it is its tradition, it believes in Vedanta, it believes that consciousness is primary, and therefore it is ready to apply this knowledge. And we have had wonderful, wonderful contacts with great spiritual leaders of India and great leaders of society, and they are interested to participate in this program. But to go back to our thing is, okay, you know, you are doing this 105 billion, what is 1 billion or what is 5 billion? Nothing compared to it. One day of war is more than what is needed. Now, we're not asking any money to be given to us. It's not like, oh, now that we are in a situation of problem, we're going to take advantage of that and we are going to try to take the money and all of that. This is ridiculous, of course. We have been talking about this for years. 50 years we have been talking about this. It's not today. We have been warning, we have been asking, we have been inspiring, we have been doing research with controls and statistical analysis and publish the research. And this is a proven technique, a proven way to do it. And yet we are saying, do what is proven not to work. <laughs> Don't murder. <laughs> Keep on doing what is proven not to work because you cannot understand me. You know, when somebody is sitting in front of a tiger, you can't tell him sit and meditate. They have either to run or to fight the tiger. So they have to, you can't, you can't imagine that they will listen to you. But right. there are people who are sitting behind the scene who have seen the absence of any solution. Everybody is bewildered. The big minds, the thinkers, the philosophers, the scientists, they don't have even a clue of how to resolve really these problems. And all they do is to give me more billions and give me more money and I will fight more and I'll create more war and I'll create more destruction. And they're okay, you might win for a while and then, and after that. So don't you want to try something? No matter how crazy it is, but right. it has been proven. It has been scientifically studied. Yeah. You have something... You know, you can repeat the same mistakes that you've been doing over and over again out of habit, out of ignorance, or try to look outside the box, try to look in something that is real, that has both a very powerful theoretical basis. And I've written a book on that. It's called One Unbounded Ocean of Consciousness. It will be reprinted now. It will co be called Consciousness is All There Is. To, to explain the logic of how it works. And we have also logics from unified field theories and quantum field theories that can actually merge together to support the mechanism of action. But forget about the mechanism of action. If you flip the switch of the light, the light comes. All you need to do is you actually try it. You flip the switch, the light comes. So be satisfied. You don't have to understand all the electromagnetic field, how it works, or where the unified field, and what is the relation between the weak force and the electromagnetic field, and how the electricity travels. Just flip the switch and get the light. And we are telling them, look how much suffering and money and fear is being spread around and is being contemplated. Don't you want to try to something to do something that has been proven to work, even if it is not according to your imagination of how reality is, how the world is, what is the ultimate reality? Don't bother to try to understand that ultimate reality is consciousness. But if you want, we have an explanation. If you don't want, take the empirical, take the value that has proven to work. Try it again. Okay, if it doesn't work, what's the problem? Right. Well, it has been proven to create health, happiness, well-being, clarity, better behavior, greater intelligence, less disease, better immune system for the individuals. So in the worst case, 
in the worst case it will not work <laughs> right but it will not work socially even though we are sure it will work but it doesn't matter you have to weigh your risks and you have you know when you have to put money you have to weigh your risk but what you will do is you will have 10000 people who feel happy healthy better living better condition they come out flourishing and shining and feeling great as the scientific research 600 scientific research studies peer reviewed published in all things showing brain coherence showing better physiology showing all kinds of benefits for the individuals okay you will have benefited 10000 people and make them happy and powerful and hopefully you know it will work but right. look at the the upside of it you know when you invest in something you measure the risk and you measure your upside yeah. and in this case we are saying there is no risk you don't want to believe us but what is the upside and what is the risk compared to one day of war to one bomber that gets downed to you know a city that gets destroyed to the suffering of mothers and fathers and children that are you know losing their thing how does it compare in in terms of human life in terms of human purpose in terms of the future then it, you can say well what to do you just i'm glad i talked to you <laughs> uh, my uncle it's a joy to be to be no, able I, to I, I agree no i agree with everything that you're saying but the problem dr nader is how do you square this unbounded consciousness with something as specific as territorial control that the fight is over in Israel and Gaza. It, it's about land. It's about people living on that land. Now, consciousness is wonderful, but how do you get down to the specific pragmatic problem of territorial control? That's, that's what bothers people. What, what bothers people is their limitation of inability to see a solution. And uh, that is what bothers people. That is what is in their mind. The, the ability to see a solution and therefore to think that there is no solution because the problem is so big. And what I'm saying is I'm not proposing a solution on the surface level of life. Right. I'm not saying they should have two states or they should, uh, you know, divide power or they should do this or that, or this is a territory this one should have, and that's the territory this one that one should have. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is you are in a room and the solution will be there, but it's dark. You don't see it. It's sitting on the table, but you don't see it. If I am there with them in that dark room, I won't see it either. You know, it's the collective consciousness. So I am, you are, we are in this collective consciousness that is in darkness. And we can analyze the darkness if you like. Well, it's a waste of time usually. Right. But, you know, bring the light and then see that the solutions will come. So what we are saying is, it's not you do consciousness and some flash of light comes and everybody goes on their knees and starts saying, oh... You know, my God, you have saved me. You have come, you know, the incarnation of the divine or whatever. Where is the divine? Where is it? Why? Where is it not there anyway? Now, you know, anyway, we don't want to get into that. And then you ask your question, why? Why all these powers of life that people have devoted their belief, their uh, everyday, you know, tapas and everyday sacrifice and everyday prayer on, why why is it kind of leading to that then a question might be asked are you yourself on that level your consciousness is on that level where you are in tune with the laws of nature you are in tune with the laws of life or are you lost in considerations that are not evolutionary not considered proper you know and therefore you ask yourself you know, what you need to do and what you need to do is clear up your stresses, come back to yourself, and then you will see all the solutions for yourself and for others. 
You know, people, great people uh, have imagined solutions. You know, the Beatles, imagine all the people. <laughs> I don't <laughs> think well, but <laughs> imagine, you know, everybody, great sages, imagining people living life in peace with no difference, with oneness. You know, Vasudeva Kutumbakam, the world is my sure. family. It's a great thing. It's fabulous. But it doesn't work on the intellectual level. Intellect is discriminating. Always it will see, I am this, my culture, your culture, right. my belief, your belief, my land, your land, my entity, my existence, your existence, your existence, channel, ch you know, challenges my existence because I am this and that and this and that. So the definition of who I am becomes a problem. Right. I am this and that. If I am the world, if I am the universe, if I am consciousness, if I am one with everyone, then I will feel the joy that everyone is happy. I will feel the upliftment that people are peaceful and harmonious because they are me, they are myself. Now, intellectually, it will never work. It's been praised, it's been talked in poetry, talked in movies. It's been, you know, wise people right. have talked about it throughout history. I'm not saying in that sense something new. Throughout history, this has been proclaimed and acclaimed and all that. Why we don't have it? It's because the consciousness of the people is in a stressed situation. And when you are in a stressed situation, we come back to what we were saying before. When you are in a stressed situation, your vision narrows, absolutely narrows. And this is an evolutionary you know, process because when you're in the jungle and the tiger is there, you're not gonna sit and think about the music and love and right. feelings and you know, expansion of, you have to run or to fight or to hide or whatever. So that is necessary, but humanity has evolved. And if we want peace, and if we want cooperation, and if we want to have from everyone their contribution to making life better, because there are intelligent people, there are people of different vocations, different capacities. That's what a human society is. We come together, what I cannot do, you can do. And together then we have both values. What I cannot do and you cannot do, our neighbor can do, our friend can do, our other country can do. Other people can do, they'll contribute, and together we will benefit from that wholeness and oneness and feeling of goodness. And again, right. we can say this, my young, all day, it will not help. It will not help. It will help in any way just to say to the people, try the technique, because right. if you don't do it, you don't get it. It's not on the level of believing on the surface level. It's on the level of truly transcending, going to that field of intelligence and removing one's stresses and strains on the individual and collective level and acknowledging that we are one with everything. That is the true meaning of Vasudeva Kutumbakam, that right. the world is my family. The true meaning is why well, I consider my family as myself. That is the, the meaning. And the, the family is just, there are different people, but they are myself. That is the instinctive feeling in what one says is a family. The sense of, I'll protect my children like I protect myself even more, <laughs> you know, on the surface level. I'll protect my parents. I'll honor my parents. I'll honor them because they are my family, which is myself. I'm protecting myself, my sense of self. Now, when a country comes under pressure like this, their sense of self is our nation, our beliefs, our culture, our history. And okay, this is great, but there is a deeper self. And that self is the self of everything, the self of everyone. Now, great, nice idea. But again, I have to repeat myself. It doesn't help just to think about it. It doesn't help just to intellectually ponder on it. But then you say, why are we doing this talk? Why are we discussing? Why I am so passionate about it? Because I am telling what helps. Right. 
And then if you don't tell somebody what helps, then how can they know? So right. knowledge is important. Knowledge is a great purifier. Knowledge is powerful. That's why we talk about knowledge. But the knowledge is to actually do it. You know, you go to the doctor, he gives you a great lecture, and then he gives you a prescription. Okay, the great lecture and how the medicine works, and this is beautiful. You come out full of hope and everything. But if you don't use your medicine, then you don't get anything. So it's good we talk about it. And thank you for, you know, talking on the subject. And I really like this this talk with you to be everywhere for everyone. Sure, no, absolutely. Just last couple of things, if you don't mind. Uh, yes. You, you were born in Beirut. Do you understand yes. the, the region, Lebanon, Palestine, Israel, very well? At the fundamental elemental level that you talk about, uh, how, how, what suggestion would you give to the people of that region to look at long term and fix this problem? I'm not talking about territorial control. I'm not talking about cultural or religious identities, any of that sort. I'm just talking about trying to solve basic problems. I think I know that region uh, as much as anyone, actually. I won't say more because there are people living there, experiencing right. and, and suffering and waking. I have lived through war. I know what it means. I have lived through it as a doctor. I've seen the suffering in the emergency room. I've seen the cries of mothers, whether they are Christian or Muslim or Jews or whatever uh, you know denomination they are. They have the same tears the same uh, uh, fears, uh, the same regrets, uh, the same hopes. And so there is a humanity within us which transcends the surface values of consideration and belonging. And therefore, the identity of who am I is very important ultimately. Uh, again, I can say what will happen when the consciousness rises when the consciousness rises is the sense of oneness rises even though it doesn't eliminate the diversity on the surface the approach of war is one approach but also they have tried other approach they try the approach of compromise you know you do something you take something and i do something i reduce my desire a little you reduce your desire a lot a little bit also and then we come to a compromise well, compromise don't work either because both feel slighted. Right. I have an ideal in how I want to live my life. And you have an ideal of how you want to live your life. If compromise means remove from my ideal a little bit and you remove from your ideal a little bit, then we can say, okay, we can survive. But I will always be sitting there thinking that you have taken from me that part. And you are thinking sitting there, I have taken from you, you had to compromise with me, you have taken that part also from me. And therefore there will one day, the new generation or after a few years, and so I get angry that I can't live my full thing and therefore it starts over again. What is needed is to be able truly to accept diversity fully, 100%. Let everyone live fully their desire to live. Now how they identify their desire to live compared to others is going to be depending on their level of consciousness, their level of awareness, their level of understanding of the reality of life. Is it a narrow awareness based on stress and strain and fear and therefore can't see the bigger picture, can't see that truly we are one, can't see and therefore always afraid of the other, or is an awareness where I feel so settled within myself, I transcend all differences and I feel, I experience directly within myself. This is transcendental meditation. I experience directly within myself the oneness that permeates everything and everyone. And therefore, my experience is not an intellectual conviction. It is a direct experience of the true nature of reality from within myself and I come out of this proud of myself and proud of myself being everything and everyone and yet rejoicing in the diversity of the expressions of that self in so many ways that life is beautiful 
a garden of many flowers and many shapes and many colors that make it so beautiful. Life is grand. Let everyone live their fulfillment and their fullness. And they will see a way. They will see a way where, you know, I have enough. There is enough territory in the world. <laughs> there is enough places to live. There is enough places to share. If there is no fear, if there is no sense of trying to destroy the other, of trying to remove the other because they are different from me, and I will accept their differences and I'll celebrate their differences because they accept my being different and they celebrate my being different and then I do my, my duty and myself and, you know, then, then there is no problem. There is no problem. There is enough food in the world. There is enough territory. There is enough place. There is enough place for everyone, enough for everything, enough for everything. It's all in consciousness. It's all in awareness. When the UNESCO was created after the Second World War to solve all the problems, its, its motto was, since war start in the mind of humans, uh, it was men, they say, since it was in human, then in the, in the minds of human, we should find peace. And that is really what we should do. It's not in the surface value of grabbing one, you know, rock more or one hill more or one kilometer more or one mile more. It's not on that level. It's on the level of being. And this is very urgent. This is very urgent that everyone understands this, that everyone listens to this, that everyone does something. Everyone does something about this. And I call all well-wishers of Israel, all well-wishers of the Palestinian people, all well-wishers of the Arabs, all well-wishers of the Ukrainian, of the Russian, of, the, uh, of every country, of India, of the United States, of Europe, every country. Of course, I'm not going to count 192 right. countries. But of every part of the world, I call upon them to please look into this and compare risk versus benefit the upside versus what you are going to lose and that you are going to lose anyway because you're going to throw it in war and in destruction. Great, go ahead, do it. I'm not saying don't, don't. do what you want. I can't convince you. Who am I to convince you not to do or not to do on the battlefield? Uh, I don't have any, any understanding or any desire even to get into that. Of course, we all want peace. We are all want saving people from suffering and, and you know on that surface value we all are the same but how to do it that is the key and that is my prayer for everyone who is a well-wisher of humanity to consider that and have the courage to do it on that note dr nader i want to thank you very much for your time it was wonderful as always uh, Great to talk to you. Thank you so much. Thank you.